hot summer months on Sodor saw a great increase in visitors from all over. The beaches were packed and the platforms were crowded with holiday makers. The engines could feel the weight of the workload. Trains were getting so long that the bigger engines had to sit outside the canopy at the big station, directly under the scorching sun. The sun wasn't just affecting the engines. Cars would overheat easily, water was evaporating from water columns, and all over the island, patches of grass were turning from green to a crisp, dark brown. It was the worst heat wave the island had ever seen. One evening, the Fat Controller came to see Edward while he was shunting. Hot enough for you, sir? asked Edward's driver. Indeed it is, said the Fat Controller as he removed his hat from his head. We're long overdue for rain. <laughs> Must be delayed somewhere, smiled Edward. I'd like you to stop shunting and assist James with a special charter to Tidmouth said the Fat Controller. I have no other engines available, so please get to the station at once. Edward puffed off and found James waiting at Knapford. James was hot and annoyed and impatient to start the journey. The train wasn't very long and there weren't many people waiting on the platform. At least the train won't be so heavy groaned James. The two engines were coupled together and they puffed slowly out of the station. First, they found the train easy to pull, and they puffed along the line with the coaches singing cheerfully. Trick, trock, late we be not. Trick, trock, late we be not. At the first station, people crammed themselves into the coaches. The engine started and felt the tension of the couplings. Come on, come on, said James. Halfway to the next station, Edward felt something tighten up. Suddenly, he found the coaches to be much heavier. James could feel Edward slowing down. It was getting dark when they stopped to pick up more passengers. This time, even more people crowded into the carriages. Edward's driver looked all over and noticed Edward producing less steam than usual. He checked the pressure gauge. On the platform, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. Something must be blocked inside your feed pipe, said Edward's driver. I'll look at it when we get to the last station. Not that far now. But he never had the chance to do it. Edward jerked forward. Sparks shot from his funnel. They flew past James and showered the pedals beside the rails. Come on, come on, come on, hissed James to the coaches. Just get them moving, huffed Edward. the hill, leading towards the last stop, between road and rail, sat bales of freshly cut grass. The workmen had cut and tied them that morning, but the hot sun had dried them out, making them brown and crisp. James grunted behind Edward's train. Let's go, Edward! Let's go, Edward! He puffed. I'm puffing my best! I'm puffing my best! Edward panted back. The train slowed at the bottom of the hill. Edward puffed and panted. 
jerked and tugged. Then he let out a huge cough, which sent another blast of sparks from his funnel. James and Edward could only watch as they landed on the side of the line on the dried grass bales. Keep going, urged James. The train slowly crept up the hill. Edward wheezed and panted in front. Then, out of the corner of his eye, James could see that one of the bales of grass had begun smoking. Within seconds, the entire bale was ablaze, the fire reaching for the next one. Oh no, cried Edward. The fire got closer towards the train as another bale was set alight. The guard on the last coach leapt out and hurried to find a telephone. Keep going, Edward! It's catching up! cried Edward's driver. The fireman ran with a sand pail in hand to a nearby bale and poured the sand all over it. That will buy us some time, he yelled as he came back. James's fireman had a pail too and dumped sand between the two engines' wheels. It's almost here! yelled James. Then it happened. Drops of water began falling from the sky, then more. And more! Edward thought the fire brigade had arrived. His driver and fireman thought it perspiration from being under the hot sun all day. And James didn't know what to think. Within a few moments, the dark sky had produced a downpour. The fire began to get smaller and smaller. The fire engine soon arrived and set to work putting out the last of the decreasing flames. The event had made the train very late. But soon, James and Edward steamed into Tidmouth. The fat controller walked forward, very happy to see that everyone was all right. So, that rain finally arrived, he said to Edward. Whew! Just in time, panted Edward. The fat controller thanked the drivers and firemen. He spoke to James and the guard, and at long last returned to Edward. Your driver told me that you were struggling. I'm going to send you to the works, and I'll see to it that the workmen look at your boiler and funnel. Thank you, sir, smiled Edward happily. A few days later, when he came home, Edward was bombarded with all sorts of questions about his escapade with the fire. Percy was the most disappointed when Edward couldn't tell him the weather for tomorrow, but Edward smiled and closed his eyes as he rolled into the shed, happy and healthy. The countryside really sparked something in you, eh, Edward? teased Gordon from the furthest berth in the shed. It did, Gordon. Indeed it did.